There's the lower arms are welded in now, all shaped up. So we're gonna throw the diff back in it and we're gonna melt the shocks up into it. So just like the chassis rails, we're now going to have to make all new control arms due to, you may have seen on Instagram, what we did, we made these ones here and this was gonna be it. So we mounted the shock off this point here, but the reason being why we have to replace them, the surface area of the piston inside the air shocks weren't enough, so it was enough to lift the golf cart up. So then we made the temporary brackets here on the back, just to see if it's gonna work and which they do. So, but as you can see, there's a lot more leverage from this point here to this point back here. So obviously it's gonna be a lot more strength. So everything operates good now. So what we've got to do is make all new control arms again. And I just didn't want to have those ugly brackets off the back. I just wanted a one piece. So basically it's gonna go across here. So we've got the 90s there, back around there, pedestal there, there for the outer bearings. And then we've got two more that are gonna go in the center here for the diff. So how we get our basic 90 degree bends like that is really simple. We put in the press here as you would have just seen. Use our square to square it up, get everything running nice and true. As you can see it's running out. So we need to tap it over. And then we put our angle box on. And obviously to get our 90 degrees, we obviously got to fold this to 45 on this end. So here goes the fruit bowl all folded up. These actually took a long time to make. Like they look really simple, but cutting the six mil plate by hand, it just took ages and by the time you chamfer them, drill all the holes out, all that type of stuff, use the hole saw, probably three to four hours work just in them alone. So what we can do now, since we already know where the axle lands, obviously since we made the old ones, we've got that measurement so we can put them on, tack them on, and then once they're on, we can then make the rear tube, oh, and obviously drill a hole out for the shocks now, and that should complete the whole circuit. Hopefully it makes a bit of sense now, you can see it all together. As you can see, we just welded our 90s on, done our first run, so I'll do a cap over top of that. Reason being why I didn't do this in one piece, would have been a lot nicer, but I did want to go and buy a $700 die for my tube bender, just to do two bends. So we sent them off to a local engineering shop and this is what they came up with. So what we're gonna do now is just join them up in the middle and I think we might do a bit of an extension in the middle to get our right width. Nonetheless, it's sort of it's starting to take shape and just gotta bring these back into position, weld them on, and yeah, it should look something like that. It all makes sense now, here goes the lower hoop. So what we had to do was add a little section in the middle because these 90s weren't quite long enough. You can see there where I've linished the weld off. So it was only 21 mil there. Quite gutting because it was nearly size for size. But nonetheless, welded that in. We've drilled our lower holes out for the shock mounts. And also need to go make another one of these bushes because when I pulled them out of the other control arms, um, yeah, I, I wrecked one. So go machine one of them up, throw it in the cart, and then we've got to find where the diff's going to sit. Then we can finish off mounting the diff in this little cradle here. It's all mounted in the cart with the shocks now obviously, but as you can see, our spaces we made from the other night are now too short, that's the top and bottom ones. Reason being the shock is now sitting this side of the tube, not on this side. So what we need to do is make some one piece ones up later on, but for the now it's enough to keep us going and we're gonna mount the diff in there now, align the sprocket once and for all, and then we'll mount the diff to this frame. So here we have the diff half mounted in there now. As you can see, we've done these ones here, we've tacked them in. So what we need to decide now is how we're going to spread the load, how we're going to join it up to the, uh, I say I'm not even too sure what you call them now, it's not really a control arm, it's like a big hoop, but not too sure how we're going to connect it up to the main hoop over there. Here we have the rear end all complete now. So what we've used is some schedule 40 three quarter pipe. I could have put another pipe through that section there, but I didn't want it to look like a close or so. Should be alright for now, as I say it's probably overkill and way stronger than it needs to be. We're going to have a lot of support because the axle is going to be the support through the centre there, so we don't need to weld up anything there. It's going to spread the load well, and it's ready to go back into the cart. Here it is back in the cart, there's no issues with it, it doesn't foul anywhere. Now to put the diff back in. And there we have it, everything's done, we fit it back up into the cart, and that's basically all the major fabrication work done. So we've got a few little things left to do, like 
make some new shock mounts got to add in those strengthening tabs there for the mounts down there we need to machine up our housing for the LSD unit and apart from that that's basically the rear end done so probably gonna end this video here because the next one's gonna be about the turbo as in we're gonna be making an exhaust next making the plenum setting up all the drive by wire machining all that up um, linking up the tube to the plenum so yeah that's it made some good progress